I am the law. Can we talk about Dread? Can we talk about one of the best chins in the game, second only to Bruce Campbell? Can we talk about Lena Headey's deliciously evil mama? Can we talk about how this fiercely relentless assault on the senses somehow still manages to deliver solid characterization and dialogue? My name is Jesse, and today we're talking about Dread. Do you require backup? No. <laughs> Back in 2012, after a nightmarish production necessitating a litany of delays and reshoots, Dread finally made its way to screens across the world, and thanks to a number of factors, it failed to make a splash at the box office, and has been languishing in obscurity ever since. Sort of. This is a shame, because it's one of the better comic book movies ever made, and in a world that places well-made comic book movies on a pedestal, it's massively underappreciated. You ready? Yes, sir. Don't look ready. Dread is a great fast-paced sci-fi actionaire for viewers who aren't interested in the comics, but it's also a faithful adaptation of the source material for those who are. Judge Dread, not to be confused with deceased reggae singer Judge Dredd, uh -huh. uh -huh. first appeared way back in 1977 in the second issue of the British science fiction comic 2000 AD. The character was conceived by writer Joe Wagner, 2000 AD editor Pat Mills, and artist Carlos Esquire as a no-nonsense tough cop taking a ludicrous futuristic extremes. Judgment. Vagrancy, three weeks ISO cubes, but prioritize murders? Correct. Don't be here when we get back. Judge Dredd had previously been brought to the screen in the 90s, Sylvester Stallone. How do you plead? Not guilty! I knew you'd say that. But that movie was completely disingenuous to the character. He took his helmet off constantly, he was watered down to be a more likable Hollywood hero, and the whole thing was framed as a buddy movie with Rob Schneider, of all people, as Dredd's comic foil. You may want to wash this seat after we get off the bike. Mm -hmm. The plot of the film we're discussing today is extremely simple. In the sprawling megacities of the future, the only semblance of law and order comes straight from the powerful and merciless hands of judges of the Hall of Justice. Cadet Anderson, played by Olivia Thirlby, a young woman with psychic powers, has only her field test standing between her and her shiny official judge badge. She is assigned to Judge Dredd, played by the chin of Carl Urban, who experienced a normal, violence-filled day in Mega City One. Sink or swim, chuck her in the deep end. It's all a deep end. But things take an unexpected turn when Dredd and Anderson become stranded inside the housing block of peach trees, locked in a battle with the drug gang known as the Mama Clan, with the HBIC played by Lena Headey. The two officers, as unalike as they are, must rely on only each other if they are to survive and live to judge another day. One of the best aspects of Dread is that it excuses the whole origin story approach. It gives a quick background and then we are thrown right into the mix. To this end, we start with a breathtaking high-speed motorway chase. In a subsequent scene, we see a criminal run away through a mall with fresh bodies lying dead on the floor scattered throughout. It's a subtle indicator to the viewer of how life here is very cheap indeed. This is reinforced when we later see, in the same setting, a few cleaning robots come out to clear the blood and mess while a PDA cheerfully announces that, quote, the mall will be reopened again in 30 minutes. The level one food court will reopen in 30 minutes. Thank you for your patience. Commerce. The surface machinations may be minimal, but the film as a whole is deceptively complex and nuanced. There's something else, something behind the control, something almost... Okay. There are modest moments of unexpected poignancy here that challenge the dog-eat-dog -dog post-apocalyptic ethos we might be expecting. And there are startling moments that appear to subvert everything crappy action movies have taught us to anticipate from movies about badasses like Dredd. Though he has a legal right to make instant judgments on the fly, Dredd refuses to execute on the spot a bad guy on only a 99% certainty that he's guilty. Can execute a perp on 99%. Movies have trained us to know that guys like Dredd shoot first and don't even bother to ask questions later. They're that certain of their rightness. And it's not even that Dredd is wavering or hesitating. It's that the rules of his world are not the rules of our world. 
and we're only learning him as we go. This is the thing that's so fascinating about this character. This is not a rogue cop. This is not a cop who's off the reservation. He is a regular guy in a world that is different from our own in ways we don't even realize we can't anticipate because we've unconsciously brought contemporary expectations into the multiplex with us. Since his inception, Judge Dredd was always intended as a critique of the creeping fascism and totalitarian idealism that was on the rise in the political realm at the time, especially in Britain, but elsewhere as well. He's a brutal tool of a corrupt system, draconian in the way he dispenses justice. No matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, this is what the law says. This is what he does. Dredd carries his stance to extremes. When he and Anderson are trapped in peach trees, taking fire from Mama's gang, he still trains her, barking out orders and questions, because that's his job, and nothing will push him off that path. Call it. Sir? You're on assessment, rookie. Call it. He's like a wind-up tool, blindly going in one direction, unable to deviate. That's where Anderson comes in. She introduces shades of gray in the Dreads world. Her psychic abilities give her insight into people and a corresponding empathy. She's an orphan, a mutant, a product of one of these slums. Dread looks up and all he sees is the crime, gangs, the 96% unemployment rate. She sees a place very much like home, full of mostly good people struggling in a tough situation. Yes, I believe I can make a difference. Admirable. You find yourself wondering if you should be worried that you're rooting for a pair of authoritarian killer cops. Nah, although you may not want to think about it too hard. Anderson is human enough, and Lena Headey's mama nasty enough to make you feel totally comfortable with the side you're on. <coughs> Though you may, if you'd like, pick the third and devastatingly pathetic option of this guy. His character needs all the support he can get. Slow-mo, the fictional drug that Dredd is hoping to take off the market, paves the way for some gorgeous visuals. It slows down its user's conception of time, which is used to facilitate disturbing, mesmerizing imagery of horrific acts of ultra violence in super slow motion, with the color saturation dialed all the way up. The Mega City 1 of Dredd has a palpable grind. Like if you touched it, your fingertips would come back covered in grit and something sticky you'd rather not know the origin of. But it also has a hypnotic beauty. We never really see the cursed earth beyond the walls of the city, but wide helicopter shots show the expanse of decayed urban sprawl. Think the flat expanse of the Los Angeles suburbs over an area the size of Britain, peppered intermittently with the behemoth tower blocks that pockmark the landscape. It's a frighteningly believable depiction of a world 100 years from now that is both stunning and depressing. This block operates under the same rules as the rest of the city. Mama is not the law. I am the law. Every moment Carl Urban's on screen, he commands it, with the presence befitting of the character. He gets every slight movement, every vocal cue, every facial twitch, so, so right, with the concrete snarl etched into his face as fans had seen hundreds of times in the comics. It really does make the film and elevates the already great script to something any comic book lover would dream of. The character could be viewed as a pretty thankless role. What actor would want his face obscured for an entire film, besides Andy Serkis? But Urban manages to give a dirty Harry-ish aura around his dread. He's the taciturn hero who when he talks says the perfect thing and will easily take care of business. <laughs> Lena Headey may be the unsung hero of the flick though. She's straight up terrifying. A former streetwalker wearing a gnarly face guard, she rules through absolute fear. This is a person not afraid to skin enemies alive and douse them with some slow-mo before tossing them off the top roof, so the 200 story fall takes that much longer. Dread offers up a tense pop boiler of a movie. From end to end, it's all escalating pressure, fantastic epic action, and brutal violence juxtaposed with raw humanity. It's legitimately great, which begs the question, why did it fail in such spectacular fashion at the box office? Well, sometimes movies just don't click with the audiences when they're initially released. It may be timing, it may be the style, maybe it lacks a big name star to put butts in theater seats. Movies tank for any number of combination of factors, but that doesn't mean they're not still great. Dread is vicious, visceral fun, a mean, nasty ride that's certainly not for the faint of heart. Yet when the blood sprays and the bullets fly and Dread grimly and pitlessly wades through it all without pause, you won't be able to stop the breathless, wicked smile on your face. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comment section below.